Chat, here we go. It's the debut for Faisal, another Mina player debuting on the stream. And it's a much to ask for one by YouTube. YouTube saw a couple different replay reviews, and if you didn't check them out, you should go back and watch them. Of Faisal playing against a lot of top ones players. Six of them, in fact, that he was able to get wins against. Players like Rettles, Khaled, Jorias, Rawas, Yan, and Nas. Yeah, so a, a lot of top players. I mean, specifically, I would say the Rawas and Nas wins are probably the most notable. But as many people even pointed out in the comments of those videos, winning and ranked is one thing. Winning in a show match is a entirely new thing. When you're running into those players in ranked, they're maybe not as locked in as, you know, ready to go hard. Plus, you get to beat them once and you get to be done. <laughs> Whereas you don't have to just play them basically five times in a row and manage to beat them in a majority of games. So it's definitely going to be a change up here playing against Nush. But as I say that, he already has himself a 2-1 lead. Popping this one up to the air dribble. Nush tried to challenge, even though he bumped face off. Face off just finding the way back and is able to make it a 2-1 lead. SF Pencil says, hey, you subscribe to fear. You know what? SF Pencil must be interested in getting us to 100,000 subscribers before the end of the year because that is our current goal. Very smart chatter. Faisal in his ranked replays did seem fairly grounded. I think a lot of people who grind through ranked ones are often very grounded that way. I think it's a really good way to play in ranked as opposed to show matches. You do have to be a little bit more mechanical. You actually surprised Nush here by not letting this go to the ground. I think Nush was expecting Faisal to drop it fully. Like, why would he float at just one inch above the ground? So Nush is diving into challenge, expecting him to land back down, but actually he just stays floating on the ball and taps it over the top. And now he has a 3-2 lead, but as I was saying, I think that is the right way to play ranked if you're just trying to maximize your rank, and I think a lot of players who are pushing up through ones ranked will play that way until they get a bit more comfortable um, because it's the best way to win against players you're better than, if that's to make sense. Uh, as Nush. <laughs> He's going to go the distance of the field. He's not going to play super grounded. He has never really played his show matches very grounded at all. And he picks up the back corner boost and resets to the top. Or not even really the top, just dead center, but over the top of face out. If you play super high risk, you may end up losing some rank points to players that you really shouldn't. And so to grind rank as quick as possible, I think you see a lot more grounded players. And, and I think that's why you see Moxie even playing that way, right? Moxie has perfected that to the point where he can almost play in the show matches and win them without going to the aerial game much at all. Uh, but even Moxie in those situations need it. And Ranny, thank you for the 59 million viewer raid. I think it was Ranny that I took the million edition thing from. Ranny and OG of the channel. Chat, we're only here today because of Ranny. So everybody say, W Ranny, thanks Ranny who, when I was getting started out and had, you know, 10 viewers or so, Randy was a believer, always sending his viewers to go check me out. Nush has this at an equal score line after Faisal was looking to try and pull away, and he actually is going to send it back to him leading. By four as he handles Nush's close to the net reset and close to the ground as well. So not often that is going to make its way through. Is that the million thing was the Dr. Disrespect? Listen, I'm not going to say that Randy came up with it because, you know, if you forced me to bet, I would bet that he probably didn't come up with it. But I'm just saying you got to get it from somewhere and I'm pretty sure I got it from Randy. Um, as Nush gets the reset, doesn't use it. Faisal pre-jumping. Falling into the net without ever getting touched on the ball. Randy, how is old fear versus new fear? Okay. Randy, I really need you to clutch out for me. <laughs> Randy definitely does know about old fear. But I'm sure he prefers new fear. I'm sure. Old fear was 100 times cooler and funnier 
less biased and better looking. Okay. <laughs> okay, so that didn't work out. That didn't go as I was hoping. Okay, <laughs> so I'll flick to the top left. Just able to handle it and get his own back corner boost. So he will go back to the full field dribble from the back corner. Something that has worked well for him. And he just muscles it on the goal line this time. Faisal has been retreating at fairly high speed shadowing. And it's been made it, it's making it tough for him to turn that around into a challenge. This time he tries to just hit on the brakes and go full backflip. And I think that's just really smart from Nush. Seeing that Faisal is perfectly shadowing directly on the line of the dribble means it's not likely for him to get a 50 that will guide the ball out of a dangerous position. You know, he can't guide it to either corner. He's probably going to get a save that just keeps it right on the goal line now. The face-off flicks. These never expire. One show match, one's ranked. It doesn't matter. If you're launching flicks like this, you're going to find yourself scoring a lot because Nush actually had, you know, the perfect read on where the ball was going and he got there just a moment late because it was 104 kilometers per hour instead of you know, just being a weaker flick that Nush could handle. And it's interesting how, you know, how simple the flicks look and how impossible to do them consistently at that level they are. Space saw a little ground cut to get himself the lead. But, you know, you can watch a Faisal or a Moxie just win a whole series off of a flick. And... You know, I could see someone who's maybe untrained thinking that, oh, that doesn't look that hard. Why can't they stop those flicks? Because <laughs> they're, <laughs> they're unbelievably hard and unbelievably fast. Faisal, going to get a two-goal lead. A rarity, actually, so far in this match as he is able to read Nush diving. This was Nush's issue yesterday with Toxic, too. Toxic recognized that Nush was a really, really aggressive player and... Even when he swings wide of the play, he'll just full dive back into it. And I think that leaves you vulnerable for reads and, and plays over the top, which Toxic eventually did to get himself the win. But I tell you what, <laughs> the, the aggression sometimes pays off. And it's obviously best for when you're down two with a minute left to go. And Nush just heads into the corner, actually slams on the brakes right after he gets there in order to keep the perfect 50 position. And just lets Faisal tap it into him. And then out into the midfield. Now, a kickoff win is going to just leave a possession for Faisal. And Nush trying to stick around and not let him get to the ground clean. But unfortunately, he did not succeed in doing that. Look at the reset. Nush has to just give him the nice one. We were talking about the flicks with ridiculous power. How about the reset pops that just send the ball soaring into top left? I mean, if you're from, if you're Nush's position... You cannot really be planning for that much movement at that level of speed. I don't think his shadow position was off. Just so happens that he got outplayed by an amazing pop. Now, can Nush stay in this game? A flick to the top shelf, and he's within one still. Neither one of these players has really been able to pull more than two goals ahead. Which means we might be in for a really solid match. Nush to late kickoff, bit cheeky. Wave dash does not work to win it, but he does recover and pre-flip the save. And now he's attacking through the air. Fakes the musty. Faisal can't get the save. This is a great fake. He pulled all the way back like he was about to launch this ball. <laughs> and then he just turtled. <laughs> but by that point, it was too late for Faisal to adjust. And now it's 9-9 with 36 on the clock. We watched uh, the Faisal versus Rettles match. That ended up being really high scoring. I say match, but it was a ranked replay because everybody who won the kickoff just scored every time. I don't know if that's how it's going to work today. But low 50 from Faisal means he's probably going to get the winning goal here. Might be a mistake for me to even say it with 14 seconds. But great patience from him. Sees the Nush challenge. It's reverse on the 50. And Nush attacking almost from the side means it's just going to slam off the side wall and back out to the midfield. Kickoff win to end the game here for Faisal. Boost steal. I've said it once, I've said it a million times, but in these late game scenarios, possession almost even matters less than just boost. Whoever has the boost advantage is likely to win. 
and Nush is, is reversing away. I mean, even if Faisal touched that, Nush was so far away that he wouldn't have been able to catch it. So almost like he just gave up there. Game number one, gonna go to Faisal. I'm gonna have him test it out. And then if they say it's good, we'll just restart it at five minutes instead of doing the whole end match thing. Just a test. Say no problem if it's good. I just want to make sure. <laughs> I really, really, really want to make sure. I don't want these guys playing. Um, and okay, they're they're ready. So we will return it to five minutes and just start them right here. Game number two. Nush and Faisal. We hop into a new match here, or a new server, I should say as they both agreed that one was not good. Nush, after the end of it, said, Faisal, you want new server? And Faisal said, yeah, definitely new server. So it must not have been as good as we hoped. Sometimes when you let the match end and you let it load up again, it feels like the server resets in some kind of way and you get slightly worse connection sometimes. So anyways, this time, after they confirmed that the server was good, uh, we did not fully reset. We just restart the timer. Maybe that's what we need to do a little bit more in the future that way the players get the exact server connection that they tested. The way that the RLCS runs, by the way, is the way that we do it normally, which is, you know, they test the server, you end the game, and then when the new game starts, you play that server. Uh, and that works out fine 99% of the time, but it does seem like every once in a while, when you load back in, maybe in non-RLCS servers, you just get a worse connection. He said, is the server bad for you? It's interesting how how they're able to speak in Arabic with English characters. I'm, I'm, there's got to be a limit to that, right? <laughs> At some point, you can't... There's got to be some things you can't say with English characters. Oh really? You can just speak. You can speak everything in Arabic with English characters because there's good enough like replacements that it's clear. Nope, you can pretty much write anything. Oh, interesting. Interesting. I would not have guessed that. I would have assumed that there were some limitations. When there is a limit, they use numbers. Ah, yeah. But I mean, even with even with numbers one through ten and the whole English alphabet. I would not have been surprised if you had told me, uh, yeah, there's some things you can't really do. But I guess intuition and context probably helps a lot, you know. With everything else you can do, you could probably just connect the dots, I would imagine. Faisal, gonna get a second goal, as it's pretty much disallowed to have more than a two goal lead at all during this series. Faisal, double jump bump, Nush, able to save it to the backboard, but the recovery from Faisal is quick enough, considering Nush has no boost. Little pre-flip, just barely saved. Nush, the double does not have success, and he should not be able to hold onto the ball either. Although Faisal actually doesn't have boost as he gets to the midfield, so he's probably forced to back off. Interesting decision. He saw his best opportunity to interrupt the play was right then. So a double jump on zero boost is always a bit of a risk, but he knew he'd be clearing the ball all the way out, giving himself a chance to get 100 boost. Nush, great read. Great read of the defense. They saw with the passive pre-jump returns to the ground, and Nush says, if you're going to be this passive, you're going to get yourself bumped, which is often the answer, especially for you know grounded shadowers who refuse to challenge. Those people get air dribble bumps. And once upon a time, I'm sure those of you who watched for a bit remember, because shadowing passively was so effective in ones, people were like, air dribble bumps ruined the entire game. There, they were, <laughs> during the time that they first became a thing, as Nush, oh, he did not get a crossbar in, but, or sorry, posted in, but he will get back to it for a rare three goal lead. But when they first came out, because Shadow defending was like the only passive shadow defending was the only thing anyone was doing. They were like, 
Air Jewel Bumps are ruined. They're the only offense you can do now. Everyone should just Air Jewel Bump every single time if they want to win. But believe it or not, the players adapted. And now you still see them, but it's never the only attack that anybody's winning with. Ush. 6-2. A great bounce back here after losing a close game in game one. Since RLCS starts in a week, does that mean teams have to make a move soon? Yeah, chat, somebody probably knows the deadline. It does start really soon, and I'm best I'm getting I'm betting that the uh, deadline is, is quite soon as well, but I don't know the exact day. It's interesting how no matter when the deadline is, almost all the moves will happen within 48 hours of it. You could give everybody three months and most teams will get made 48 hours before the deadline. I saw midfield demo is converted for a goal. Who do you think is the most interesting to watch? Are you asking about ones? Are you asking about threes? Uh, you, you, NCRT, that, that was not a uh, Rocket League video that you saw. I don't know if you guys saw, but Moist had to like drop their team because I mean we've, we've seen like, Vista issues and stuff like that a ton. But that was an Apex Legends team, not a Rocket League team. Oosh, I bumped it. He just missed Okay, that... That felt like a bit of an open net miss. That right there felt like he was playing a bit ahead of himself. Maybe uh, maybe Faisal was directly behind him. I was half reading chat, but I think he should have just scored a wide open net. <laughs> as far as I could tell. And now he's actually going to get scored on too. Tomorrow, April 14th is the deadline. Ah, no wonder everything is happening right now. Yo, four nice eight ING. I'm saying it that way on purpose. Even the tier one for five months. Who is the most exciting ones player? Chat. I mean, I think, I think the most interesting ones player, as Nush shows, the air dribble bump with the double jump bump is still effective. I mean, the most interesting player to watch in a one v one situation, I mean, is Dark. The guy is so unique. He's so fun. It's just seeing something you've never seen before. I think. A lot of people would agree. Um, of the players who are... Oh, the busty double, or the breezy double. For the fans who always want to remind me it's a breezy... Actually, it was a musty. No, it wasn't a breezy. Take it all back. The one time I say it, it actually is just a musty. Um, yeah, anyways, Dark, I think, is most excited. Nush looks like he's going to pull away, especially with this kickoff goal. I think Nupo... Of the guys who play at the very top are pretty interesting. Rawas. I mean, the, the guys who are just the best of the best. Daniel as well when he plays, although he hasn't been playing recently. It's all going to try and get a bit of momentum here in the last 20 seconds for the road. Gets something going in the air. Couldn't hurt. As I saw. One last opportunity. What, what do we got here on our four second, not really victory lap, but momentum victory lap? Hey, <laughs> that's a good shot. And Nush doesn't deny it, so it allows him to get a little warmed up here. The 180 attempted save on the goal line didn't work out. Tied series, one to one, in the face all debut. Game number three. Nush had a pretty significant lead. Only a couple minutes into game two. So he has looked like the better player in the match, despite the fact that it is 1-1, because that first one was neck and neck between the two. But we saw Faisal attack through the air at the end of the last game, and Nush probably felt like he had a real chance at saving this. Went to the backboard and came off for the first 50. But the ball stuck around. I bet you he was... I wonder if he jumps. I, I think if he jumps, he was trying to like power slide catch it without a jump it would seem. But it felt like he got deep enough in that maybe a flip 
Might have been able to save it. It's all going to go up 1 0. And seeing Nush on low boost. Oh, he lost a great opportunity. That was a huge. Oh, I want to say letdown. It makes it seem like <laughs> I'm, I'm disappointed in Faisal, which I'm not. I bet you he's disappointed in himself. But you have 100 boost, you have possession, you have a defender who has no space or, or no time to leave and grab 100, and you're just going to have him you know, pinned back. That almost always results in a goal for the attacker. But Faisal just missed a flick that not only didn't score, but immediately gave away a counterattack. And now Nush chipping high. He's seeing Faisal on the near post, so he goes up and over the top of him and takes it to the opposite post to tap it in off the right wall. And now he's got the lead. Dush on the edge of wall. I'm actually surprised he got that final touch. I thought maybe he would try and go low, but maybe he knew that even playing into Faisal's pre-jump he was not going to be able to get a really effective save. One thing that Faisal does a ton, and it has not been working against Nush, but I'm assuming it must work for him, you know, on occasion, are these really passive pre-jumps where he's boosting away from the ball and then trying to intercept Nush for a great shot. Nush with the resets and a send over the top of Faisal. But those passive pre-jumps... They, they lead to really soft saves. When you do connect with the ball, you're traveling away from it, and it's not likely to end possessions. And Nush has shown that now a few times. Either, and also, you know, you could just get yourself faked or delayed. Ooh, Nush, oh, so close. He used the reset to go over, got crossbar down, but almost had the recovery off the back wall to dish it in. Instead, to face off possession. He doesn't really have boost to work with. So he's power sliding around the ball in order to cut it towards the net to make sure Nush can't reset either, but Nush just locked in onto the car and a demo is the answer. Now he's headed back the other way. Nush is gonna be able to steal this hundred. So fully starved out is Faisal. Zero to his name. He does decide to pop the ball off of a bounce that has the best chance at getting him power. If he tries to continue that dribble any longer, he's going to get a much worse touch and probably just get dunked and scored on. Should be able to get his own back corner this time, though. And actually, hook shots a ball on target. No, just barely off target. He actually dashed his way into the corner but didn't steal the boost. And so now he's in really big trouble. I think you got to decide either... Go for the full-on boost steal, commit to it, or stick around and, and try and play the follow-up on your dunk. He didn't want to play the follow-up on his dunk because he expected that that would cost him a bit of boost and then end his possession anyways. Nush was around to stop it, but... Now it's back with Nush on the attack. After the game one loss, he seems to be in the zone here against Faisal. Creative flick. Not enough to cut the ball back on target. And now Faisal doesn't seem to have an answer on those low dribbles. Nush is rising to the ceiling to meet him here. That does cost him a lot of boost. Credit to Faisal for getting a favorable 50 on that surprising challenge. And now the ground pinch is intercepted. And Faisal punish there. It seems like that should do it. That's on target. And the second goal took him a lot of time to get it, but he kept his possession going this time. Something he didn't do earlier in this game. And that, that one flick, you know, is huge. Because that's a two-goal swing. I think he eventually could score that possession. And uh, that would also prevent the counterattack goal. And we'd all of a sudden be tied. So, every single play is so important. Nush! <laughs> Nush is just going to try and see how many resets he could get. A dribble that barely even starts towards net, but there's the first reset, the second, and a third to finish it off. And he puts it crossbar down. He even got a little bit ahead of the ball in case Faisal was trying to save it from underneath. Forced him to go up and around it. 
couldn't make that save. So now a 5-2 lead after Faisal worked so hard to bring it within two. Dush hits something like that to extend it right back. Dush. Trying to get a 50 here outside of Faisal's net. Really no other way to score with the ball already rolling and how little boost he had. Didn't really have enough to make a real play. And now he's just turning right back on the ball. He knows that Faisal has to play quickly and he could play even faster. Because when he's really been exposed is when Faisal, you know, pulls back, slows down, delays to win the 50. But I think... You can expect Faisal to be all in here in the final 30 seconds down three. And at this point, it's already over. So game number three, going to go to Nush as well. Goal differential heavily in his favor. The only game win for Faisal was by a hair margin. As this dunk. Ooh, are we going to see a Nush pogo? He was pogoing in the warmups. Maybe up to one. Might see him look to it. Game number four. Faisal. Maybe that's a good way to think about it. With an E. That's what I have to do. I have to trick my brain and just spell it out like English phonetically and then think about their name that way every time in order to get it right. Whenever you put fear, it autocorrects to fear. Well, that's good. Oh, whenever you put, whenever you put feet, you have autocorrect the other way. Hey, that's a true fan right there. That's a true fan. Can't even type the word feet anymore. Well, Faisal, who had played the whole series in an octane and had played every ranked replay that we watched of him in an octane, is now in a Fennec. So we will see if the Fennec is the answer for him against Nush. We don't know, but Faisal... Fennec looks like. Unfortunately for him, he starts immediately down. Now the power shot is going to be off the post. This time he dives. This time he dives on it. We saw him on a pretty similar play earlier off the post. Just go for a boost deal. Might have a little bit to do with Nush's positioning. He felt better about Nush not clearing it around him this time. I saw a little bump. Don't think he's going to be able to make it back. And no boost deal either. So actually he's in a bit of trouble. I like him turning back on the play again. The really passive free jump, but he gets over the top. And that is a way to get away with it. It was not surprising that Nush went to the bump. Considering the way he was setting that up defensively. A little boost deal. Wait, look at this flip. This was nasty. Look at this recovery. My million-year-old brain would have never thought about it. But in reverse, needs to turn around and make a quick play on the ball. And he won 80s and dashes and... He's able to stay ahead. I would be... That's one of those moments where, like, <laughs> when you're playing in the game, it feels like you can obviously recover well, and you could tell that it's a position in which you could recover well, but your brain just can't do it. At least personally. Maybe this is just a, my, a problem that only I have. I'm like, oh, I, I could turn around. I know that it's physically possible with the game's mechanics, but... My brain just can't do it, and I just reverse, so I just backflip and tumble. But not Faisal. Bumps here in the corner. That should just be a free goal for Nush. After sending him into the air. Yeah, you might have even seen out of the corner of his eye that he got ramped off the wall. Because he contacted the wall with the roof of his car, which... Just slid him up out of control. <laughs> Faisal is not that old. Why do you call him Fossil? VIP or ban chat. Noosh! Gonna make it 4 2. Despite the impressive recovery, it is Noosh again looking to extend out the lead. Mod? Wow. <laughs> Uh, 
I tried it to 180 in free play and you just end up on your roof. Yeah, you gotta be built different. Three goal lead as we approach halftime in game number four. And interestingly, when, you know, people were talking about, ooh, what a shot from, what a save! Uh, we stayed on the defensive perspective. I thought Nush was gonna be able to get it in, but luckily, Faisal didn't give up. And now Nush is reset. Shot is saved. Is this just directly on target? No, it's slightly off. What a <laughs> clear attempt from Nush. Was he trying to shoot? I, I almost feel like he was trying to shoot. He was trying to get like an insane, basically psycho style redirect across the whole field. Maybe he was just trying to pop it high. But what he did do ended up just giving face all the ball. Now air dribble bump. Gonna be the only way he can get that save. What? What is he doing? I mean, this is that passive jump that I'm talking about. I want to see it from his perspective. 52 boost to work with. Jumps over the top of it. And... Oh, that is a final touch from Nush. He actually had the save if Nush didn't dunk it back in. I think it was slightly rolling out of the net. But Nush got back to the ball and finished it off. Uh, as I was going to say, when we were watching the ranked replays, we mentioned it at the start of the stream, you know, getting one win is one thing, but being able to win over the course of a full series against somebody who is, you know, used to the 1v1 show match scene can be really tough and that's actually what we've seen so far here with the 7-2 lead and, and a likely finish here from Nush is game one went to face all and since then it has been all Nush Nush In a single jump notice that he's about to lose the play and turn around and wave dash defensively. No way he could use this flip, so he just lets the ball fall. And Vassal needs to get going right here, right now. That demo will do it. Should be a third goal. Not the end of the world to force a potential game number five. One minute and four goals. It's going to have to come off of creative kickoffs. And Nusha's guy who has faked kickoffs in this position earlier in an attempt to secure games. He's just going to take the diagonal this time. It's a big win. And that first touch, though, isn't going to do it. He's going to end up being in the corner with no way to get through Nush. And a very likely change of possession. We see that that is exactly what happened. Ooh, I feel like that shot was worth taking. Nush pre-jumped it. He got it still moments later. But he's actually lucky that Nush pre-jumped it. I mean, Nush pre-jumped it because he thought for sure it was coming. I guess you could argue he faked it. He, he never really got close to the ball, but instead, he waited for Nush to make the save attempt and follow it up. This kickoff into the back corner of Nush. Sidewall pinch, 35 boost to work with. Needs a goal and he gets it. Bates Nush in and gets a fifth on the board. Now 26 seconds. We haven't really seen kickoff shenanigans at all in his attempt to bring this back in the final moments, but I think kickoff shenanigans are in order because I don't know if you get two goals, 26 seconds, and that is definitely a mix up on the kickoff. Early jump into wave dash. Nush actually lands off the bump dashing into the ball. And this goes passive. This goes passive late, and I think that opens the door for the flick, which is too high. It was a good attempt to finish this series. If that flick was top right, we'd be popping off, and I'd actually feel pretty good about his chances on the next kickoff. But if you accidentally send it soaring to the back wall, you're getting scored on, and the series is over. So a decent attempt. And at a good debut. You know, it's tough to win your debut match. Like I said, Nush is actually playing at a really high level. Um he might have even come in favored against Toxic, and that was a really close one. GG's. Wait, we have a chance to pogo. Can he get the ball up in time? He did. Now he has to uh, he has to take a pogo shot because the ball can't land. Love it. Pog. GG's.
Thanks for playing. You need speed to get make a good one. It's all right. That one was sick in the context. <laughs> in the context of how much time he had and the fact he couldn't let it bounce. That's about as good as you could hope for. GG's.